Okay, so when you have a quadratic equation, you can have distinct roots and we learn how to tackle that case in one of the previous video and we learn how to tackle when you have repeated roots. Now it's the time for complex roots. So the procedure will be the same. You assume your solution to be in terms of e to the mx. You substitute this and you get the auxiliary equation. Now probably you have to use the quadratic formula. Okay, that is how you can get complex roots, identify complex roots. So let's say you get complex roots alpha plus or minus beta i okay now actually a complex root means two distinct roots right think about this first root will be alpha plus beta i second root well it's alpha minus beta i right now these two are two different roots so what is the general solution well someone can say y is equal to c1 e to the alpha plus beta i x plus c2 e to the alpha minus beta ix. Now this is totally correct, okay? But we are not going to stop here. So we have distinct roots and this is correct. The reason that we are not going to stop here is we would like to simplify this general solution or we would like to have a much simpler solution. A simpler solution means I would like to have my solution, general solution independent of I, the imaginary root. Now how can we do that? Well, we can get the help of Euler's formula which I have given here. Now, if you use the Euler's formula in the general solution where you have written your general solution, treating that two complex roots as the complex root as two distinct roots, we can do a simplification. Now, I'm not going to do that simplification in this video and we do not expect from you to do that simplification in the exams. If you are interested in the simplification, you can go to the relevant section in the book and read it. Okay. And it's it's little bit of lot, so that is why we skip it. Okay, all right. So let's say that we do the simplification. What we get is a real nice format of the final general solution. Now, if you look at this general solution, you don't have i. You have c one e to the alpha x. Now, alpha is the real part of the complex root. And beta is actually the number part in the imaginary number. Now, beta is always positive. Beta does not include i. Beta is independent of sign. So, you just pick the number part in that complex root, right? Then, if you know alpha, if you know beta, you can write the final solution if you memorize this format of the general solution for complex root. So, that is what you should really do. You have to memorize that formula, okay? Let's look at a couple of examples and it will make more sense. So we have this differential equation y double prime plus y prime plus y is equal to zero. So the auxiliary equation is actually m square plus m plus one is equal to zero. Now we have ax square plus bx plus c. So if you have this, the quadratic formula is actually m is equal to negative b plus or minus b square minus 4ac over 2a, right? So let's use the formula. Negative b is 1 plus or minus 1 square is 1 minus 4 times a is 1, c is 1. So 4 times 1 times 1 is 4 over 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 1 plus or minus 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So root of negative 3 over 2. So actually the root is negative 1 plus or minus 3 i right the square root of negative 1 is i or root 3 don't forget the root okay square root 3 i over 2 now we can divide each term by 2 so we get negative half plus or minus square root of 3 i over 2 okay now what is alpha here alpha is negative half right that is the real number part beta is now alpha you count the negative or positive whatever sign you have there you count that for alpha but beta you drop i you drop plus or minus it's just root 3 over 2 now what is the general solution the general solution is y is equal to c1 e to the alpha x cosine beta x 
plus c2 e to the alpha x sin beta x, right? So, because of that, y is c1, e to the alpha is negative half, negative half x, cosine beta is root 3 over 2x, beta is root 3 over 2, c2 e to the negative half x, that's because of alpha, and sine beta is root 3 over 2 x. So, th this is the general solution. Okay, so if you know alpha, if you know beta using the formula, you can directly write the final answer. Okay, so let's do one more interesting example. So here we have the differential equation y double prime plus 9y is equal to 0. So let's solve that problem. So we have y double prime plus 9y is equal to 0. So the auxiliary equation will be, I can directly write, m square plus 9 is equal to 0. Now be careful, okay? Now here someone might write m square plus 9m is equal to 0. It's not, okay? If you are not comfortable with writing the auxiliary equation directly, I highly recommend use that e to the mx procedure, okay? So that you don't make a mistake. All right. Now, so what is the root? So here b is 0, right? Because you don't have a coefficient for a. a is 1, c is 9. So using the quadratic formula, b is 0 plus or minus b square is 0 minus 4 times 1 is 1, 1 4 times 9 is 36. So here it's 36 over 2. So 0 plus or minus square root of negative 36 over 2. So we can drop the 0 actually. So plus or minus square root of negative 36 is 6i, right? Over 2 is just plus or minus 3i. Great. So now what is alpha? Alpha is, what is it? 0, right? Because you don't have a real number part. What is beta? Beta is 3. You drop the i, you drop the plus or minus, then you, what's left on the imaginary part is 3. So we know alpha 0, beta is 3. So y is c1 e to the alpha x 0x cosine 3x beta x plus c2 e to the 0x that is alpha x sine beta x is 3x. Now e to the 0x is 1. So y is c1 cosine 3x plus c2 sine 3x. Now this is the general solution. So that is what we do when you have complex roots. So again to summarize, if you have two distinct roots, m1 and m2, the general solution you can create out of e to the m1x and e to the m2x. That's distinct roots. If you have repeated roots, the only root will be m1. So e to the m1x is a one solution. Next solution is you multiply by x. So the next solution is x times e to the m1x. Now if you have a complex root, it will be alpha plus so minus beta i. So you take, take alpha, you take beta, you use that formula, you put alpha and beta in that formula and you generate the general solution. So that is how we deal with the three cases, okay? All right. Thank you.